Hey everyone, welcome back to Camp Keyframe and in today's video I'm going to tell you uh, how to create these little pop effects, these uh, secondary motion accents, what they're called. And um, it, you can see them uh, a lot nowadays in animations and it just gives that extra little oomph to your animations. Um, so here we have this light bulb and it needs to turn on and then these lines need to pop off of it to give it an extra little accent. So first we're going to create something to turn on this light. So we're going to create an ellipse, uh, a circle. And, all right, not like that. We don't want that, we want to fill. Okay, maybe scale it up a bit because I, uh, by the way, I have these different layers. I have my background, I have my, these wires. Uh, I have the lamp itself and I have the lamp background, light or color, because I want my light, which turns on, needs to be below the lamp itself, but above the light background color. So we're going to add some effect to this effect, go to blur and sharpen uh, Gaussian blur and turn that all the way up. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to right click the layer and go to layer style, outer glow, there you go. And we're going to give that a bit more size, like that. That's fine for now, okay. We're gonna put that aside for now. We're going to lock all of these layers. And now we're going to create the accents and while you're not selecting anything, you can draw a shape by going to the pen tool. And we don't want to fill on this, so no fill. And we have this same stroke color, and let's give it like uh, five. And then we can click here, hold shift, to make it go perfectly uh, vertical up. And then click again, so you have this little line. And we're gonna open that up, contents, shape one, stroke one. And then our line cap should be a round cap. I like that more, like this. And now we're going to add a trim path so, because it needs to grow out. And we're going to uh, open our trim paths effect and then um, go to like two seconds and click on the end stopwatch to put a stopwatch for 100%. And we're going to go back in time and set it at zero. So what this does is it grows the line out, but now it needs to disappear again. So we're going to go here uh, a few frames further than the first uh, starting point for the for the end position and we're going to create a stopwatch for the start and then we're going to go here uh, a few frames further and go to 100% so you can see this line growing up as I move it to 100% so now it uh, grows up but it doesn't look right because it's now a little little line because there's not any easing on it so select them all right click keyframe assisted easy ease and we're just going to create this nice curve here. Yeah, but now it's too slow. So let's bring this in. Maybe just bring them in as well. Yeah, there you go. A nice fast little line. I'm going to cut off the layer right here. So I'm going to drag this one in. So it only starts at this point. And then we're going to cut it off right here. And we're going to do that by pressing Option or Alt on your keyboard and then hitting the end bracket. Yeah, maybe that's a bit too fast. Cool. Press U to close it up and only see our keyframes. And now we're going to duplicate this a bunch of times so it's, it moves around the light bulb. And uh, the important thing here is that your anchor point, which is right here, is in kind of in the middle of this light bulb. Because let's say I put it up here and then I duplicate this by pressing command D, go to the rotation and I rotate it. Um, then it rotates from that point, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is delete that and put the, the pen behind, put the anchor point right in the middle here and then we're going to duplicate it and then go to rotation and we need to rotate it a bit to the right let's say 30 degrees duplicate that again and hit the rotation and go to 60 duplicate again 
just the same thing. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go to 120. Nice. And now we can select all of these, duplicate them, and then pressing Command and Bracket to place all the layers on top, like that. Pressing R opens the rotation. And then this one is right here, and it's at 30 degrees, but it needs to be right here. So let's put a minus in front of this 30, so minus 30 degrees, and then it puts it at the exact same spot on the left. This one as well, minus 60, minus 90, and minus 120. There you go. Nice. And what I like to do to give it a bit more to make it a bit cooler, I guess, is this is the first one, the second one. Yeah, let's offset this by one frame. So let's place it over one frame. One frame again, one frame again, one frame again. And these are the, the left ones. And I want them to align with these ones. So this one needs to go at the exact same time as this one. So now it kind of twirls out. And one frame, one frame, one frame. And like that. It gives it a little bit more character. And now we need to unlock this layer and let's just put it right there. So when it turns on the accents, maybe the accents can happen a little earlier. Nice, and you can, let's say, I wanna make this a, a lot more present. Uh, some thicker lines and I like that. Uh, you can play around with these effects, of course. And uh, if I comb them all together, by pressing Command Shift C, uh, call them accents, hit that button, and then I can even scale them up if I want. If they want, if I want them to be bigger, all at the same time. Uh, okay, so that's it. Uh, a quick and easy little way to create these uh, fun accents. Um, and I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next tutorial. Thanks. Bye-bye.